what's going on boys and girls so we are here with another video and this one we're going to be looking at the toshiba portage z20 t i believe it's a slash b this is a fanless design and so it's an intel m5 uh eight gigs of ram 256 gigs of storage now the thing that makes this different this particular device is it is actually essentially toshiba's version of the surface pro or probably even closer to the surface book now what do i mean by that is for those that don't know the surface book is actually a tablet with a dedicated base and that's more or less what this is so on the side right here do you have a little release clip so if you want to lock it unlock it then you just have whereas the surface book has you know fancy little magnets and everything else this is more um shall we say old school in the way that it actually works and there you go so as you can see uh so spec wise the screen itself is a 1920 by 1080. Um, this currently is not running uh, Windows because uh, Windows and me just, we have a love-hate relationship. And the short version is I really, 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 really don't like Windows on these type of devices. So what we got on here is actually uh, Garuda Linux. So Plasma, for those that want to see. Uh, this is an IPS display, but it's got a matte screen on it. So viewing angles are actually pretty good. Um, brightness isn't the best, but it does what it needs to. Uh, so for me, the biggest thing with these devices though has always been portability and battery life. One of the areas that the Surface Book had was the battery life. Um, it was, you had the base and then you had the tablet portion. Like that, this has a dual battery setup. So you have the screen or the tablet portion, which has one battery and the base has another battery. So it's about 7,200 watt hours of a battery. This is used, so obviously they claimed 17 hours ago when this came out, like 2015, 2016. I'm not expecting that, but I've gotten somewhere about seven hours of usage. And for what I need this for, this is very, very usable. Uh, the keyboard is typical, small, uh, travel's not terrible. I, I've used, you know, this thing over here, which is the elite book I've used consumer portions i've used take your pick uh this is somewhere between good and better for a small frame notebook so for me that's totally cool uh performance performance um so one of my favorite applications that i use for like video editing is cinelira and this being arch uh compiling from the aur because it's from the git repository takes quite a while i'm not gonna lie but for what you're getting so let's talk uh ports and stuff uh so the base <laughs> for this thing this thing has a lot of ports so the base you have two usb 3.0 ports uh you have your actual ethernet adapter power adapter headphone jack which is an oddity nowadays and Let's see, micro SD card on the actual tablet, mini HDMI out. Then you have uh, Thunderbolt, and then you have your volume up and your power buttons. On the other side, lock, Kensington lock, VGA out, and full size HDMI out. Nothing on the front, nothing on the back, as you can tell. This device in 2020, 
21 is good if you're looking for portability above all else. Uh, so for me, Linux and port <laughs> Linux and portability work quite well. Uh, it does have its issues just like any other piece of older tech. For me, the biggest thing is obviously some of the performance issues. Uh, and what I mean performance issues, it's not so much that it performs badly. It's that it is a limitation of the design of the device and the process that they chose, which was that fanless design. So there's really not much you can really do about it as far as that. Uh, it gets a little hot when it's <laughs> running a, a full compile of uh, Sinalera, so I'm not going to lie there. But overall, this device has been an interesting experience. If you're looking for a 2-in-1, oh, I forgot to mention, 5 megapixels on the back. I don't know why I'd use it. And there's a 2 megapixel on the front. But as you can tell, it is not very thick. And if you really, 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 really insist on just using the tablet, it is not that bad. That is the thickness of the tablet. And your bottom has obviously all the lovely portage for things. Um, if you're using the tablet, down here is your uh, power cord. So in, like I said, in 2021, don't expect miracles out of this device, but this device is actually well worth it because I only spent $200 on it. So it's definitely worth getting if you can get it for cheap and you're in the need of a surface kind of device. So uh, definitely worth getting. Again, I'm probably giving this like a seven and a half um, just because the keyboard's hit or miss. Some people like it, some people won't. Uh, and some of the performance which is more of a limitation of the processor and not so much of the actual like device that they use. Uh, and the battery life has been fantastic though. And that's really what I needed because this is literally a machine that just gets thrown in my bag and, you know, kind of goes, that's what I needed this for. And it succeeds tremendously at that. But at the end of the day, you guys know what to do. Comment, rate, subscribe, and all the fun stuff. And I will talk to you guys on the flip side. Peace.